Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Beach FM, great to welcome back company representatives on the Greater Wellington Regional Council. Penny Gaylor, good morning. Good morning, John. Through the wonders of technology, we're having a chat when you're actually uh, present at the Transport Committee meeting. Uh, and um, the, the chair of your Transport Committee, Roger Blakeby, was quoted yesterday as saying that government support is going to be needed for quite some time in order to support public transport. Uh, are numbers really down, Penny? It, it's not so much... Well, you know, yes, numbers are down, um, and it's been going up and down and up and down, but, of course, we're not up uh, to you know, where we were projecting previously or where, where numbers were, let alone everything kept... Pro- pro- all the projections were that we were kept going and going up and up and up. So actually just, um, you know, just in terms of the finances, uh, you know, we pay for um, the, each ride is subsidised by the rate payer, by government, all to a, you know 50% of the ticket price essentially. Mm-hmm. And when you put your money into the till, um, that equates for or accounts for 50% of essential the co- essentially the cost of running transport. Right. So um, it's a very movable feast and lots of different cogs for this machine. Mm-hmm. Just in terms of trying to equate gosh, how much have we lost or um, how much are we trying to, to find? Mm. And um, so, you know, yes, it's, it's a hard one to pick, but it's certainly for the long haul, you know, it's like us as we all kind of coming to grips with, you know, international travel is off off the calendar yes. for quite some time now for us all. Yes. But we don't know exactly when, do we? And the same with public transport. When is that golden time that we can say um, it will be a month like we had a year ago mm. at the same time? We don't know that yet. Uh, so it's just quite tricky to really um, you know, nail down those numbers um, and just, yeah. Manage it. So we're doing well though, but and we appreciate that so many people who are using public transport are, and that they are sensibly using, uh, uh, you know, managing themselves and respectfully for all the other users, doing the right things with wearing masks. Yes. So people are just get it. Yep. And it's not just for yourself, it's for everybody else too, folks. So let's do it for everybody else. Yes, let's so- just be considerate to people. Yeah, it's good. It is good. It's, uh, I've um, didn't. I've been on the public transport a little bit recently myself, and I must say that everyone, without exception, is wearing the masks. No grumbling, no complaining about it, and it seemed to happen almost immediately. So that was really good yes. to see. Yes, absolutely. So good on everybody. Now, this, of course, we're now referring to the COVID-19, which we hope is temporary. But some of the aspects affecting public transport may be more permanent. They may be more systemic in that um, quite a few firms are noting that more and more people are working from home. And therefore, maybe not as many people will be travelling to Wellington, even when COVID-19 is over and just a distant and, and rather dark memory. And that's something, I suppose, is very difficult to plan for. Yeah, and I guess that's po- quite possibly part of Roger Blakely's remarks, you know, his thinking about that. That Interesting, you know, in the conversations I've been having, um, I've been privy to and, and kind of the wider concept of how do we get people to move from driving a car in to people using a bit of public transport. Um, Really it was about, you know, less vehicles on a road is a good thing. Uh, So if some of those people or a lot of those people who were staying at home and working at home previously uh, have used their own vehicle, that's a good Mm -hmm. thing. For, for some aspects of um, you know, yes. how we kind of manage things like like uh, traffic congestion and traffic pollution and, and all those sorts of things. So that is good. Um, we want to make sure that those who are traveling have every confidence of the, the uh, reputation and the convenience um, and the, the safety of using public transport. You know, seeing other people with masks can in some ways be alarming, but in other ways it can be reassuring. We're all doing the right thing. We're all looking out for one another. This is good. 
And I've seen some of them that are just fashion statements, Penny, uh, not just the, the normal uh, disposable ones. There seems to be a lot of permanent masks uh, being used, and some people have gone to extreme lengths, and I see some of them, obviously based on the Maori Language Week theme, some of them are wonderfully decorated and, and a lot yeah. of fun. So that's great oh, to yeah. see. Yes, I know. It should be quite, you know, we'll we'll look back at this time and go, what was high fashion? Oh, a mask. Mm, indeed. <laughs> I have to say, a lot of my uh, friends, have, it's qu quite the effort to getting, you know, on, on trend with uh, their masks. So, you know, that, that's all in good spirit, isn't it, too? Sure. You know, and, and a lot of people are talking about because they want to support a particular uh, fashion house. So yeah. it's good. It is good. Now, last yeah. time we talked, we talked about the river walks. I believe there's been some uh, alteration to that Develop schedule. Yeah, there's been some development. So, uh, um, the cut to the chase, both the Otaki River walkover for next Wednesday and then the Waikanae River walkover for early October have both been cancelled. So this is due uh, in, large to, in large part to the COVID situation and um, just you know with certainty we need to um, make a call on it and um, what we will be doing is a much smaller invite only for um, uh, events uh, to be determined when those are um, which is about the uh, the friends of those respective rivers, the, the, the friends of the Otaki River uh, group and the friends of the Waikano uh, group um, will both, you know, they'll have representatives attending because the, the purpose of those walkovers is for regional council to be held account to account on what we've been doing over the last year and what we foresee will we will be doing in the next following year. And so those those people and usually the public um, get to hold us to account and check in on us and that, that is good. So this one time, and I have to say this is probably about my 12th or 13th year mm. that I was going to be on the Ōtaki River uh, walkover and probably about the probably about the seventh time I reckon, six or seven the time I've done the bike I one um, exceptional circumstances but we we're getting getting used to uh, chopping and changing and adapting pretty quickly to these exceptional circumstances so bear with um, please understand and um, you know work's been going on we can report back to the community in different ways um, and so certainly you know when I'm on here with my um, interviews uh, perhaps after those respective invite only walkovers we can dedicate our discussion to those particular rivers and yeah. and what was reported on and and um, you know, and, and leading up to that, you know, I'm always uh, keen to encourage people to put through a question to me about those rivers ahead of those walkovers, and um, then I can, on the day when we have our invite-only um, walk or slash bus, um, that I can put that to um, those that are there right. on your behalf. Excellent. Well, Penny, thank you for joining us. I realise you're literally in transit at the moment, and it's been great that you can join us here on Beach yes. FM. And we always appreciate your time. Take care, and pleasure. we'll talk to you pleasure. next pleasure. week. Thank you. You take care, and all the listeners, please take care. Thank you. 106.3 Beach FM.